Hello, welcome to the SCL1 TNA Knitting Project Podcast. My name is Sharon and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the UK where I live with my family, three cats and a dog. Today is Thursday, August the 20th, 2020 and this is episode 68. Welcome if you're a new viewer, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this is my podcast all about my crafts, um, mainly knitting. I have a little bit of crochet and a little bit of sewing. Now, um, the knitting project is actually my way of getting through my whips. So I do different projects over a six day rolling rotation. It's six days, not seven, because I'm busier some days than others. Having said that, um, I have been on holiday for a week. Um, thank you for all your lovely comments. I had a lovely time. <laughs> um, so I've not been on rotation. So I have got, I think most days, I think I've got most days, but um, I haven't worked on much, some as much as I've worked on others. Socks. Um, it's no surprise is it whenever I go on holiday my kind of go-to is socks I always want to just knit socks and this is yeah this is no exception it's definitely it's very sock heavy um, I'm even missing a sock whip which is really quite funny um, right so let's get into the main part of the podcast admin the podcast is a Ravelry group um, I realise Ravelry is not the most accessible place for everybody at the moment and um, until they sort their life out I'm going to have to try and work out something else um, that is under construction and I will get back to you when it is finished please do however feel free to check to chat in the comments below I will read them um, and hopefully get back to you if you've got a question I don't think I saw any questions from the last podcast I think it was all just wishing me a lovely holiday which is what I had it was really lovely um, and we've got two knit alongs going on at the moment um, one is due for a check-in at the end of September which is the square a day cow and we're on 274 squares I believe so the blankets are getting quite big now and um, the garment knit along um, which is where you are we are knitting a garment and it will be um, the price for that will be at the end of December it's running till the end of December whips are allowed as long as they're less than 50% done um, I think that's it for admin this week I, I say that every week and then I go oh no it's not I remember but I don't think I've got anything else hopefully not so day one is socks um, okay let's start with the FOs um, if you saw my last episode I was working on a pair of jelly roll socks um, and this is patterned by Mara Catherine Briner uh, it's for little shorties and it's got a little roll top at the top there with two different colours um, I've done a slip stitch um, heel flap and gusset alternating my colours um, there is a little twisted rib section in the middle and then just a rounded toe I've done mine on 60 stitches on 2.5 millimeter needles um, and there are indeed two of them I finished them so that's actually the one I finished I know this because it has a design feature at the bottom because I do a garter oh, it's my hair um, a garter um, heel turn and I missed a ridge in the middle there can you see that it's like oops I must have pearled that one um, and that one hasn't got it <laughs> that's what it's supposed to look like that's what that one looks like but I was not going back to fix that after uh, I mean the only way I could fix that now is to duplicate stitch it and really <laughs> no <laughs> it's not gonna happen um, so the yarn I used was my hair is everywhere um, the yarn I used was Hedgerow Yarns and this is her bouquet colourway um, which is so pretty, There's a, it's a very pale blush pink and then this beautiful muted green, such a pretty set um, as I said these are, there are two so these are blocked, ended and finished that was my first finished object pair my second one <laughs> you've not seen Right, I have decided, and I think I spoke about this on the podcast, that I want to do um, a series of shorties in a pattern. And I'm going to, my hair's on this one too. I'm so sorry, I'm molting everywhere. Um, I'm going to keep these for next summer. Um, whether I open them at Easter or whether I open them at my birthday, because I originally thought I'd open them on my birthday, which is June. But then it occurred to me that we tend to get more of the nicer weather in May. So I think I might open these at Easter. Um, so I'm going to keep them all away 
and open them at Easter. Now this is a Nora George. This is Nora George's advent from 2018 where she did kind of a fade. Um, so I've taken the first ooh, 18 days. I think this is the first 18 days. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days. Um, and done no, 15 days because there's a thing at the top. Um, I missed that one. Um, and done eight rows of each. So every single bit of this, so even on the back here, can you see, is eight rows, except for the toes. The toes I did a full, I just kept going on. I didn't intend to, but once I did it on one, I did it on the other. So these are matchy matchy, scrappy socks. If you see my Instagram feed, you will see how many ends I had to weave in. I mean, luckily I'm a willing end weaver, but there was a lot of ends on these socks. Um, and this is the Magnolia sock pattern from Curious Handmade. It's part of the Sock Society one, I believe. I think it was Sock Society one. Um, bear with me. If this bit of paper tells me it, that would be useful. It doesn't... I don't think I've got the other one. Hold on, this might tell me it. Okay, so that's the slight downside from only painting out the bits you need. Um, it doesn't tell me which one it was. I'll look it up and put it in the show notes. Um, got a stitch down the middle and it's got a cable detail and it's got this beautiful lace on the top which if I take it off the blocker and put on my hand you should be able to see a bit better so that's the lace detail down the front it's so pretty I really liked it it was really intuitive I did not go wrong once on it um, I didn't need to put stitch markers in I'm telling you this for a reason um, I didn't need to put stitch markers in or anything and um, yeah I loved it I even managed to do it in the car without any trouble whatsoever so um, when I was when we were out and about when we were on holiday touring I thought well I'll cast these on so I can do them when I'm at home so I'll do them when I'm at home when we get back so I didn't have to concentrate in the car um, but this was so intuitive that that actually wasn't an issue. Now, I've, I've changed these majorly because um, for a start off, they're a full-size sock. So I didn't do the leg. Um, and I've done a little Pico um, edging cuff, which actually fits really well. I was really pleased with how well it fits. Um, I did, however, make a mistake on this one and managed to twist it, um, which I hadn't realised until I did the socks. I've blocked it out best, best I can. And it doesn't affect the fit of the sock. But um, if you're going to do this, I suggest that you mark where you cast on your first stitch and your last stitch on each needle. Now, I use two circulars, so I had four stitch markers. But obviously, if you use um, DPNs, you might want a few more so that you know that that stitch is supposed to meet up with the, its partner stitch at the top to make the pico. Because I did my pico by... Um, knitting them together I mean, if you sew them together maybe you don't have so much of a problem that might have been the way to go to cast it off and sew it together but then you'd have to pick up all the stitches and that seemed like too much of a fiddle um, but yeah so that's what I did and that's my first little summer shorts shorty for next year um, and I figured you'd actually quite like to see something that isn't a race um, a jelly roll sock <laughs> so yes yeah, so that's the magnolia socks by curious handmade now I've bought all the sock societies over the years and have knitted very few of them so I thought this is about time I got some of these patterns done so that was my first one of that series I hasten to say I'm probably going to keep those jelly rolls now because it's so close to the end of the hot period right so I then immediately cast on another pair and this is my current sock whip so it's hanging out in my elderflower stitches bag mainly because I normally swap project bags at the end of each project but I just love this bag it's so summery and yeah I mean at the end of August I will probably put my summer bags away which actually I think is really sad but you know autumn and perhaps not the biggest fan of autumn as other knitters 
Um, I do like spring is my favourite, if I'm honest. But um, so yeah, and then my next socks are a tangled mess. Apparently, here we go. This is the Winter Rose sock, also by Curious Handmade from the Sock Society, and I finished sock one. Yeah, so this is sock one. It's another lacy one. You can see the lace down the front there. This possibly wasn't the best yarn for this, but actually it's not too bad. Um, again, I did a little pico cuff. And again, this time I marked my beginning and end stitches and it's not twisted. Um, and I've done a contrast toe. Again, the, the pattern is a full length leg pattern and I've correct, um, cropped it down to a shorty. And I am, I've done my cuff and I'm going down the heel of my second sock. So I didn't quite get my second sock done. Now, this pattern is a four row pattern repeat and only, no sorry, it's a five row pattern repeat and only two rows of that pattern repeat has anything going on with it and only two stitches or three stitches. One of the rows has three stitches and one of the rows has two stitches where anything's going on with it. Do you think I could get that right? I had to put stitch markers in it. I thought, this is ridiculous. I've just done a whole cabled sock without any stitch markers, being able to read the knitting, no problems whatsoever. Comes to this. <laughs> no. Um, but I do love it. I love how it's turning out and that will be another sock for my little set. Now this yarn is beautiful. This is from the May Club by Lay Family Yarn. I was just supposed to show that occasionally Things I say on this podcast, I do actually do because I did say I'd be using this next. Um, I was going to make jelly rolls, but I've decided to do this um, little collection of lacy shorty socks for the summer. So that's the main colour. It's so pretty. And then this is the little contrast. And yeah, I absolutely love it. I love these colours together. I love this sock. I love the pattern. It's just, you know, come on, brain. It's not that difficult. Now, I only print out i'm not going to show you the pattern because obviously it has the secret sauce on it but i um only print out literally what i need so i haven't got much of a photo but i have got one so look, it looks like that but i'm just doing the foot and i'm doing the 64 stitch one again on 2.5 millimeter needles i'm using licky needles which i love and it's very tangled i don't know why it's so tangled i'm going to love that aren't i um yeah so i'm just going up the heel flap as we speak and that is a little yeah that's so Amy, my little needle cozy so that's my socks at the moment um i mean i go through phases where all i want to do is knit socks um which is not very conducive for the podcast if i'm honest doesn't really help does it um but I think my cable, I've just re remembered, my cable needle fell out in the car. I think it's still there. I need to go rescue that. Um, but anyway, that's day one socks. So day two is normally shawl day, but at the moment I'm having to do Christmas knitting. And so it's super secret Christmas knitting. And I can't show it on the podcast because two of the reciprocants of things I'm knitting actually watch the podcast. So um, day two has been scrapped temporarily. I am still doing day, day two. I just can't show it. So day three is garment day and that is hung, hang, currently hanging out in my Stitched by Mrs D bag. The lovely Paula, who has a lovely podcast. I love her podcast so much. And the cutest little bears. Can you see that's my little bear there? That's Pippa. And I love her. Okay, so we are currently working on my EDT. Now the ED is a t-shirt by Isabel Kramer. Um, it's really pretty, it's really sweet. I'd already knit this, but the bottom of it felted. Um, the yarn is Nora George. Um, it was knitting your George, Nora George yarn, but it was an MCN and it obviously got a bit hot and um, it felted, which is annoying. But the top part was knitting um, S 
70-25% Stellina. Um, so it's got a sparkle to it. So the top's knitting Stellina with Stellina in it. And that was fine. That didn't felt. So what I did was I cut off, you can see it, I cut off here um, where it felted. And luckily I had an, an, quite a bit of this yarn left. So that was what I had left of the, well, a little bit more than that now, but I've used it. That's what I've got left now of the Stellina. And then I had this one, which was a full cake, which isn't got, hasn't got Stellina in it. It's just the um, 7525. So I've got those two left. And I'm helical knitting the two of them together. It's really difficult to see because I'm really on such tiny needles. Um... <laughs> And I was doing it on my car journeys because then I could go round and round in circles. So that I think is where I was last time you saw it. So I've done all that. And then also in car journeys I've done from there to there and there to there. But um, I got bored with it in the car and decided I wanted to knit socks. Because this isn't a giant sock and you know was just going round and round but no. So um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I've done all that. Um, It'll get done when it gets done. It's really good if I need to grab something quick and easy to knit. Um, if I'm on a Zoom call or anything, then knitting this is really quick and easy. Um, so hopefully I will get that repaired. Possibly not by the end of the summer now. I really want to get back to my Ingrid, um, which is a colourwork sweater, which I've kind of had on holiday for a little while. So I need to get back into that as well. So I want to get this finished. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, I haven't got a pattern or anything for it because it's just knitting round and round at the moment. There is, in the actual ED, there is a pattern on it. There was a pattern in the original one. I couldn't be bothered. Um, so I'm literally just going round and round in circles. And I'm going to do a split hem because there is a short row shaped hem at the bottom, which I don't, I didn't do on my last one. I did a split hem so I could wear it over jeans. And as long as I've got enough yarn, that's what I will do. I have got this which is a leftover sherry iris which I think is probably close enough to blend together should I need it so that might go on the bottom of it but yeah so that's my kind of current garment whip which is I've already knit, them, knit it once but there we go so that's my day three this is such a mess I'm gonna love it when I take these out aren't I that isn't even in its needle cosy either. I don't know where its needle cosy is. But that's day three, garment day. So day four is crochet. And the one I worked on this week is hanging out in my fondant fibre bag. Um, although, as you can see, it's getting a bit big for it. I'm going to need to need to decamp it into a bigger bag. And I am crocheting a um, Christmas blanket with little granny squares. And I have done another strip. So there's 20 squares in total across ways. And the idea is I'm alternating a planar square with a more variegated. And the ones with the stitch markers are the ones that I did this week. So that one, I the... Leading Men Fibre Arts is the the yarn, so I did those ones with the stitch markers on and then I attached it, so the biggest part is the fact that I've attached yet another strip, so I've got three strips now. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. So yeah, now I've got my three strips all together. It's going to be quite wide, actually. I didn't realise how wide it was. I mean, it would make a good scarf. Maybe this Christmas I'll wear it as a scarf, and then next Christmas it'll be a blanket. Um, so I've got all my Christmas minis that I've got, all Christmas, what I consider Christmas coloured minis, not that they're necessary Christmas minis, in a um, basket. And I'm just... Chugging along with little granny squares. 
and uh, yeah I'm really really enjoying it if I'm honest it's it's really nice and I'm using a three millimeter extremely dirty crochet hook oh why my crochet hook's so dirty that's a bit odd um and for the linking color which is that color there I've now moved into this is from um the Antet Tetherer which is a lovely silver the perfect silver and it's called silver bells just to add to the Christmas theme <laughs> um now with my leftovers I am making a magic knot ball and I'm going to um knit a habitation throw out of my magic knot ball but as you can see this is a long-term project it is going to take me a while I mean it's certainly not going to be done by this Christmas I mean it might be done I mean it's done enough to sort of just lay artistically across the back of a chair <laughs> you could possibly wrap it around you a little bit if you're cold um, <laughs> maybe if I get a little bit more done between now and Christmas it would work but that's going to be a long-term project for the moment so that's what I'm working on my crochet day which is day four so day five is here comes the whip and um, at the moment I'm working on my habitation throw now here comes the whip is a new section that I introduced um, to try and get some of my long-term whips out um, and finished um, it's supposed to be my mystery blanket day but I haven't worked on my mystery blanket day all pretty much all year which is shocking I should probably do that um, but um, my current one is the Habitation Throw by Curious Handmade, which I'm using my advent from Lay Family Yarn, and it's hanging out in my So Sweet Violet bag. And this is a project that I love, but boy oh boy do I want to get it finished. Um, it's the project that will not end. <laughs> So this is a little um, circular needle cosy from Craft House Magic. These are really good actually. They do hold them quite well. And where was I? Was I there? Well, I was there. So I was there last podcast. And now I've done the whole of this mini. And I'm just putting this new one in my latest one um, so it's done all that but and I've really I am coming down in numbers look this this is all I have left I thought it'd go really quickly by this stage it really isn't it's still going um, but I love it I can't wait to have it finished and then I'll be able to show it much better because um, I can film it because it's quite hard to show you now it's so pretty I love it but yeah boy oh boy is it taking its time um, now a lovely viewer spotted a drop stitch in this in this section here um, which I wanted to show you I have now fixed so that's where the, where that little donut was is where the drop stitches were and I take that off because it's kind of distorting it a little bit um, I pick the stitches up with some spare thread I then um, sewed them in where they were supposed to be so sort of duplicate stitched it and then sewed the end of the thread in so um, I mean that hole's a little bit bigger than the rest but otherwise it's pretty good so I was really pleased with that which is a much better fix than the last fix I tried to do when I tried to drop it down and then re-knit it which went horribly wrong so I've learnt that lesson, I catch it with a stitch marker and then sew it in much easier and actually looks a lot better. So yes, that's my habitation throw. It's a lovely pattern and I am knitting another one. I will knit, um, I've got a Sherry Iris advent from last year that I want to knit in one. Um, and yeah, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. <laughs> I'm battling the sun now. Can you see it's starting to come round? I'm recording really early because um, I need to get I need to do some work today. Um, so I'm trying to get this all recorded before work so I can then edit it later. Um, but the problem with it is is that this room faces east, so I get the sun straight in and it's just peeking round this corner here. 
and it's definitely coming around there so at some point I'm either going to have to drop that blind um, or that it's going to blind me that side so one of the two I may have to drop at some point but I think we might be done by then you never know your luck so that's day five here comes the whip so day six um, is my scrappy project day and that is hanging out in my lovely birthday present from lovely Kelly of Le Famion and it's made by Ginny Makes you'll see another one of her bags later and um, this is my North Easterly which is a pattern by Skinanigans and it's hanging out in a Craft House Magic Needle Cozy This is a, another blanket and I'm currently on the West Green Loft Yarns strip. So all these strips are different dyers. I've got Sherry Aris, Hedro Yarns, Down Sheepy Lane, Craft House Magic, Lay Family Yarn and I'm now doing West Green Loft Yarns. I'm also going to add in Giddy Yarns and Woolly Goodness and then a random, I really love these minis one which I haven't got enough from one dyer to do. Um, and then, so this is the West Green Loft Yarns one. I love this. I really love this project. It's such pretty colours as well. Um, so I was there last podcast. I haven't done a huge amount, but I have done a little bit. Um, I wanted to try and get it finished, but I missed by quite a bit the strip, not the blanket. The, that that would have been impressive. Um, <laughs> I wanted to get this, this strip finished, but yeah, I missed by quite a bit. Um, I'm just about to go into this lovely purple colour, which was part of her bluebell set that she did this year. Um, and I love this. It's very soothing, very relaxing. I really, really look forward to Scrappy Day coming around. So I can work on it. Um, and that's, I'm doing it on a 2.5 millimeter needle, so it's going to take a while. I didn't do myself any favours there, did I? <laughs> but I do love it. I love it a lot. So that's my. And this I think is going to be a summer blanket for next year for out in the garden, but um, I might very well just be using my habitation throw until this one's finished. So that's day six, scrappy day. So that's the last of the rotation, but I have got my cosy memory blanket, which I desperately need to show you because I've got all my squares done. I'm all up today, except for today's. And um, it's got all my stitch markers on it. So if I don't show it to you soon, I'm going to run out of stitch markers. Right, so that's that side. That's that side, right, here we go. Um, Right, this is all Lay Family Yarn. All of these are Lay Family Yarn. This is from the, do you remember the grab bag I got? This is all from the grab bag. These are all Lay Family Yarns, so aren't they pretty? I love that one. And that one. So pretty. So that finished off, squared off that side, which theoretically means I should have a square off video somewhere amongst all this. And then we started here, so these, these are all a family yarn. That's particularly pretty. Uh, yeah, we're still going with lay family yarn. Then that is hedgerow yarn and is from my jelly roll socks. And as is that. And then it's back into lay family yarn again there. That is part of her, one of the blanket clubs. Uh, Ina Blyton. So it's part of her, um, Children's Literature Club, sorry, and that was part of the Eden, Eden Blyton one. It's really pretty. So yeah, that's my. These are these are getting big, aren't they? So I'm one square. I've got two squares that I've done in advance. So I'm one square over at the moment because I haven't done today's yet. But it's actually getting quite heavy because of all the stitch markers. <laughs> I really needed to podcast so I could grab my stitch markers back. But I love this. It's really pretty. As I said, there'll be better footage of it, hopefully, at the end of the video where I squared it off. I think I took some squared off video footage. Now I'm saying this, I'm thinking, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so yeah, that's my cosy memory blanket.
right so that's the end of the knitting content um i know i fair whipped through those today but um i'll go into more detail next week when uh i've got less to show you so it doesn't go on for too long because i don't want to bore you um i have got one sewing to do which is this one um this is a new project so it's hanging out in a new this i also got this bag from the same person from get your yarn which is granted through kelly um, and they're absolutely perfect for embroidery now um if you're new to the podcast if you check out my um instagram feed you will see a journal cover i made for my current journal that i'm working on um well i decided i wanted to they're only for three months so my next one when i get it will be the end of september um so it's an autumn journal and i got this autumn kit from the stitchery there we go um i got this kit from the stitchery and i thought what i would do is make another journal cover for my autumn journal so this is not very inspiring at the moment so i have started it as you can see i'm starting to go around the wreath and that's doing a whipped stitch i am very new to embroidery um i started it a year ago um i've had a lot of help and encouragement from the lovely sherry sherry iris podcast and yarn and now has a patron too um go check it out it's brilliant and yeah <laughs> that's as far as i've got but the idea is i'm going to make this <clears throat> into the journal cover for my next journal i'm not sure how i haven't worked out the logistics of attaching it yet but i know it will attach somehow if you um check back on my one that i've got at the moment i've used english paper piecing to attach my little bit of embroidery so i know i'll get i'll get it on there somehow um i will attach it somehow but i just love this so, I mean, I like quite like the fact that it's got scrappy edges. So what I might do is fit that to the front of it, so that fits in the front, and then use the scrappy edges and put scraps of material across it and build it up that way and embroider it that way. Um, I saw, I think it was Gainer, who used um, some scrappy bits of material and then sort of French knotted it to attach it, so it was. The attachment was part of the um, the pattern, the, the, and also look, like look, using tiny little buttons and things. So I thought I might do that to attach it to the backing material. Um, yeah, I just love this. Um, so I'm getting there with this. I still need to finish my um, whip stitches. I've got I've done some whip stitches. Um, I need to do I need to do the rest of the whip stitches and then hopefully next week you might get some a little bit of color on that so yeah that's my current sewing um, I haven't done any more English paper piecing at the moment um, not too sure why maybe I got it out of my system with that journal cover I think also because I now have an idea of a purpose for using English paper piecing I'm being a bit more mindful about what I actually use it for um, rather than just making random hexes so that's useful I'm glad that that's the case yeah that's hanging out in this so that is my sewing so I also do a journal section now my main planner um, I haven't got with me this week but um, I thought I might show you what I'm doing for my holiday I bought this little junk journal, which is a traveller's notebook from Carol's Recrafted Boutique. Um, she does have a, a YouTube channel as well where she shows you how to make um, these journals and pages, which is great. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm sticking loads of photos. That was our Friday. That was our meal out that we went for. Um, into into this journal so i haven't got any further through yet than just sticking in the photos i haven't done anything else i haven't done any decorations or anything i have just stuck the photos in um so this is all just photos at the moment 
and I printed these off my printer they're not great quality but they're not horrendous either um, and I'm, I'm just working my way through I didn't want to cover him up I thought he was lovely and this is a nature journal and bearing in mind that it was all about touring and nature um, I so that's okay that was a Sunday at home so that got the picture I love that photo that is Katie my eldest and her fiance and our puppy so that's just such a lovely photo they're both cuddling her it's so sweet um, it was a really hot day that day so um, I'm going to fill this up so there's some blank pages I'm going to fill this up with the photos Carol put love, puts lovely little bit, bits of ephemera in here which I haven't used yet I will use it throughout but my idea is I'm going to stick all my photos in first um, and then I am going to write I mean little bits and pieces about the day but also I want to write um, actually this is a really good one to show you here we go um, little bits of facts now this is the White Cliffs of Dover and can you see there's a little window in there um, well I'm not too sure what that window is about but I'm going to research it and I will write this in I might write it on that page or I might stick extra pages in to, to do it now I am actually going to run out of space in this one which is um, annoying I've got more photos than I have pages because um, I took too many photos I think so I have got a little blank traveller's notebook that I haven't used yet so it's completely blank and it will fit in the back of here um, so I'm going to attach this with some elastic and then go into there so then I'll have it'll look like that and then I should have enough pages hopefully I took a lot of photos which bearing in mind that I tend to only video is really bizarre but there we go it's because I was doing my Instagram stories for you lot um, and it's, it says August, August, holiday August 20, 20 so if you ever get one of these and you're not quite sure what to do with it doing something like this if you even if you've got a special day um, you could fill this with special days um, it's quite a nice thing to do um, and that's what I'm using this one for I'm looking forward to doing the research of all the questions I had as we were driving through about bits and pieces um, that's going to be fun um, yeah so that's going to be what it is um, now normally if I've got a special day I do a special page in my planner which if you've watched this podcast you've seen before but because I would have so many special days my planner would be like this um, I decided I would do a whole planner just for that and it's an excuse to buy another planner another journal and have fun with it so that's my journaling session it's also a slight acquisition there as well right acquisitions this probably comes as no surprise but there's a few of those because obviously I had a week off um, I'm going to first of all we'll start with this one which is some lovely yarn that I got in a de-stash from Jenny of Willy Goodness Yarns she was doing a personal de-stash she still has a few bits and pieces on her de-stash page and they're an absolute bargain that's actually a really true colour of what this is it's got gold stellina in it it's about a DK and what I want is a little lacy well not lacy necessarily um, I want lace on it so like lace at the bottom maybe cardigan so if anybody can recommend a DK short lacy cardigan pattern could you let me know because um, I would really like to, d to use this there are eight skeins I think of it and yeah I love it and I could really do with a little gr a little green cardigan which is when I saw this I was like oh that would work um, the perfect so thank you very much Jenny thank you for the extra cake <laughs> Jenny found a bit that she caked up bless her and added it in um, so yeah that's that was brilliant fantastic and that's going to hopefully be a cardigan sometime soon um, I actually could do with it by Christmas but we will see um, right let's do this one next because it's just on the next this is no particular order other than the pile next to me Right, the lovely Laura of the Lonely Knitter podcast and Crafters Balm um, had a play with some yarn dyeing. She's calling it Bumbling Yarns. And when she made these minis, I messaged her and went, yeah, could you save me one? Because, you know, they couldn't be more my colours. If they tried, could they? Absolutely love them. 
Uh, so she's called this Faraway Spring. Uh, yeah, love it. And she very kindly threw in a little mini. And a scrappy pack, which is absolutely gorgeous. And it's all little scraps for um, my blanket. So this will all go in my blanket. She's got a real talent for it. That's got speckles on it. So there's yeah, there's there's many more in here actually. That's really pretty. I really like that one. I mean they're all pretty, but just some of them speak to you a bit more than others, don't they? Oh, and then the last one is that blue. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to putting those in my blanket. You'll be able to see them better then, won't you? Um, but yeah, lover. useful minis and we know I'm a sucker for a mini so that was that one now I also got a bag from Ginny Makes because I love the rope bowls but I thought this was a fab idea look at this it's made the same way as a rope bowl but it's a rope bag isn't that clever um, and this is going to probably be my new sock bag when I sort my life out Although I do like the pockets on that um, old flat stitch is what I have to say. Um, but I love this. This is so pretty. Um, so yeah, that's Ginny Makes. Um, these two are clubs. So if you haven't got the... Um, oh, I don't know which one this is. Hold on. August, that follows, doesn't it? August Mini Club from Elderflower Stitches. Then please do look away. This, this is right on my straight. Pretty. And these are the minis. Yeah, really love that. So you can look back now. I'm not going to say too much about it because if people have just looked away, I don't want to spoil it by saying the colours, etc. So that's that one. And then also, this is also a club. And is the August Scrappy Project Club from um, Willy Goodness. So again, if you've not got yours, look away. Um, that's the inspiration photo. It's a beautiful little extra. And then look at these for colours. Lovely. Again, this will go in my cosy memory blanket. I love these five gram bundles because they're perfect for the cosy memory blanket. Right, that is Ken going there, so you can look back now. And This is the last one that I'm going to show you this week. I have got my Sherry Iris Club, which is there, but I haven't actually opened it yet. So um, I will <laughs> open it and show you next week. Um, and then last but not least, I managed to get some minis in the um, update that the lovely Helen of Giddy Yarns had. And I got all the fun of the fair, which, wow, I love that, that one, that one love these so pretty i mean i am wondering how they would look in, in scrappy socks because i think it'd look absolutely fab i'm also going to put at least those two in my northeasterly um yeah i love this and i got summer fruits a really cute little bundle these are 10 gram minis these were the 20 gram minis and these are 10 gram minis. They're really pretty. I really love that. So that's it for my acquisitions this week. Um, well, I say this week, this two weeks. Um, so yeah, I think that's the, the end of Happy Mail. 
so all I've got left now is a little bit of chatter. Um, so I've had a week off. I've um, we went touring around the southeast of England. We um, left. We started where we left off in Kent, which I th think was. Oh gosh, where was it? We were at Manston, so maybe Sandwich, um, and kind of toured round that edge, the east coast of Kent, into the south coast of Kent, um, and then we are now. Um, it, we've, the last stop we had was in Arundel, which is in West Sussex. Was it East Sussex? I think it's West Sussex by then. Um, apologies if you live in Arundel. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go sort of west, <laughs> which would be that direction. On Oh, I don't know. West. We're going west <laughs> um, towards Chichester. Um, and that will start this Friday on our Friday Adventures because I'll be back on Friday Adventures now that I'm back to work. Um, it was a lovely holiday and I picked the right week because it was 33 degrees most of the week and it meant we could drive around in the air-conditioned car. Bonus. Um, I had a couple of days at home. The Wednesday we had the day at home and I started printing out all those photos and then the um, no, Sunday we went to Farnborough Saturday. Did we have Saturday at home or did we tour out on Saturday? I can't remember now. That's awful, isn't it? We had Wednesday at home. Thursday was the day of the thunderstorms. And we had an awful journey getting back. The M25 and the M23 flooded. And we were the other side of it. So the M25 and the M23 were between us and home. Um, and we got stuck in, um, there's a, a town local to us called Rygate that's got a one-way system. We got stuck in Rygate for three quarters of an hour. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, <laughs> that was fun. Um, so Friday we were at home for definite. Saturday we must have gone out again. And then, no, Saturday we didn't go out. Saturday was the Hendu, friend's Hendu. Um, socially distanced Hendu. Hendu. So yeah, so Friday, so Thursday was the last time we went out and we finished in Arundel and got caught in the rain. Oh, no idea why I was telling you that. <laughs> but it was all really good fun and as you saw, I got quite a bit of knitting done, which was nice. Enjoyed the break from work. I um, had a few bits and pieces come in, but actually nothing horrendous at all. It was really good. Um, and I've been back to work all week this week and it's been a bit, bit of a week. My computer did an update and has broken my... Um, virus program antivirus program <laughs> it's like, really so um i'm waiting for a patch from either the antivirus um people or from microsoft so that they will work again um and then we had a i had a zoom call with a couple of our guide leaders last night um informal meeting I mean, I say I had, that sounds really formal, doesn't it? I had a Zoom call with the other girl I do brownies with and my daughter who was sitting next to me. <laughs> but because we, between us, do brownies and rainbows in the area, that's, you know, quite quite a few of us for our meeting. Um, yeah, but it was, um, it was quite interesting. It does look like we're going to be going back via Zoom. Um, we've not heard anything officially from Girl Guiding yet as to what we can do um, we can meet outside but that's not an option for us with brownies and rainbows it will be for guides so I'm thinking guides might go back to outside meetings but um, at least until we get the dark nights um, but sorry I was just thinking on my feet there oh well maybe we'll start the meetings earlier we can't do that because Kate does rainbows <laughs> that doesn't work on the same night um, so it does look like we're going to go back to Zoom meetings to start with. Um, it's a funny old thing, this virus, isn't it? We kind of trying to all get back to normal and then all of a sudden you're like, well, no, I can't actually do that. So fingers crossed we don't get a second surge, we don't get a second wave and that we, we'll sort it all out and everybody get, is sensible. Although having said that, we went on one of the hottest days, we drove past Margate and Ramsgate and I don't think I've ever seen so many people in one place, let alone the fact that it's during the virus and we're supposed to be socially distancing. Um, I don't know, do people not care? I, I don't know. Do they not realise that they're close to that, close to other people? I mean, it might be if you're there, 
you don't realize there's so many other people around you i don't know but um yeah i really really hope we don't get a second wave um i'm not the biggest one for winter anyway um i quite enjoy i enjoy the run up to christmas i enjoy being cozy and warm i'm going to enjoy working from home on stormy days um but equally i like i like spring i like being able, able to get outside and um although i hate the heat um i i think i prefer it to um being stuck in day after day um I'm, we're going to try and make an outside room for the winter um try and make a heated outside room but i'm uh, not quite sure how viable that will be we'll, we'll watch this space um otherwise i don't think i've got anything else to tell you um i've got nothing coming up in the future at the moment other than getting back to guiding um work is fine kids are fine um meg will start her new job on the 1st of september Thank you for everybody who was concerned about her parrot bite. She's fine. Um, we still think it's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's it because I'm beginning to ramble. Um, I always think, oh, I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Um, right, so there may or may not be a vlog at the end of this. I don't know how much I recorded last week during the holiday. I don't know whether I've got so much I'm going to need to do a holiday vlog or whether I've got so little I can just condense it down and put a little bit of a vlog at the end. So there may or may not be a vlog at the end of this. You'll find out in a few moments when, you know, I say bye. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. I think we hit over the 500 subscribers um, over the last couple of weeks. So that's exciting. Um, and I've, I've just had a notification. I've got another one, which is really sweet. I love that yay um anyway i'm going to leave it there so i hope you're all okay wherever you are take care and i will see you next week no idea why my camera was telling me off then she just told me my setting wasn't available i'm like i just turned to record um oh it's beautiful out here it's so warm <laughs> i'm under the cherry tree so um, we're about to head out to Shoreham to Into the Blue. Um, looking forward to my meal. My anxiety levels are quite high at the moment. Um, my main trigger for anxiety is not knowing where I'm going and not knowing what to expect when I get there. I guess it's the unfamiliar. Um, now, even though we've been there many, many times before, it's the first time since lockdown um, and yeah feeling a little bit apprehensive about it if I'm honest um, I know once I get in there and we get seated all the anxiety will go away and I'll really enjoy myself but just this bit between now and then is really unpleasant and it tends to make me snappy so I've got to try not to be snappy with it because that's just mean um, there's a plane going overhead I won't be surprised if he doesn't stick his head out of a window at some point in the near future. Um, anyway, I am going to work on my EDT today. See my um, stitch by Mrs. D bag, which I love. It's so pretty. Kind of matches my outfit. <laughs> um, I am wearing a linen dress because, you know, linen, it's cool. It's really, really hot. Um, so I'm going to try and get some of my EDT sorted i can't see myself on the screen so i'm hoping it's not as dark <coughs> when i play it back <laughs> my neighbors are being slightly quieter at the moment so i can actually record outside um so yeah that's all we're doing there today um so our friday adventure today isn't and actually a friday adventure it's just uh, going out for a meal so i'm not doing any of the instagram stories or anything today um but i'm hoping we'll go out tomorrow um, that is the plan and I want to spend a day here which will be Sunday because we've got shopping order so it makes sense to have Sunday here um, so we won't go out Sunday 
um, not unless we end up going to look to Farnborough to look at a plane, which is possible. I don't vaguely remember that happening. Uh, maybe not. Um, but the weather's supposed to break down on Wednesday, so I want one hot day where I just stay at home. Um, that'd be nice. But it's gorgeous out here right now. I don't think I've ever appreciated my garden as much as I have this year during lockdown and having an outside space which is all yours to go and sit in and it's just so special I mean it's not the biggest outdoor space I mean it's not tiny but it's not huge either but it fits us all nicely we've still got the gym at the moment they made the jump box um, so yeah, we've still got the gym up because although they are going to the gym social distancing at the gym means that it's um, they don't get as much time on the equipment as they want so they're still using the outside gym which is I mean for the moment while we've got weather brilliant and even I guess even when we haven't got weather we can do that I'm hoping we're going to get an exercise bike that's um, my mission at the moment is trying to get hold of one either a new one or a second hand one and then we can stick it under the shelter for now to use and then if not he can come in I figure he can go in my craft room if nothing else but we will see um because I feel like I want to do something and an exercise bike would be useful um so yeah just settled and ready to go so I'm going to knit for a few minutes until Ian puts in an appearance I think we're supposed to be leaving here about 11 Actually, I think he said half ten and it's 20 to 11 now. So, we're leaving in a bit. <laughs> so I'm going to knit for a little while. Yeah, because the idea was that I was going to try and vlog this so that I've got a memory of it next year. This is our holiday. He's there, the chauffeur. Looking very smart, look, he's in his shirt. You don't see that very often. No, I don't, that for me. Don't like shirts, much prefer just simple t-shirts, much cooler, but there you go. I prefer shirts, but hey. I mean, I'm wearing a dress, so you know, suck it up. Mind you, I always wear dresses nowadays, so you know. Um, that's the sat nav interrupting me as usual when we're doing these things. So we're heading off to the restaurant. Um, and following on from my earlier piece of um, camera work, they've very helpfully got all the instructions that you need on their website, which I think is brilliant. Um, so we know exactly what we're doing. Um, you know you're in the wrong lane, yeah? That's right then. <laughs> normally we are in this lane, because normally we're going straight on on a Friday, but um, we're going in a completely different direction, whereas normally we go and explore Kent on a Friday. Um, we're going to Shore, which is kind of like pretty much the opposite direction. Um, but hopefully we'll do a bit of Kent tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking we'll be at home on Sunday because um, we've got the shopping order. And it seems a bit mean to leave the kids with the shopping order while we disappear off out. But having said that, um, we were talking about going to farm, but weren't we? Yeah, maybe, definitely. So we'll see. We'll see what happens on Sunday. I want one day in, at home in the nice weather. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, so we'll sort of take you along for the ride as much as I can. I have the camera recording the back end. Actually, if all we're going to do is motorway, there's probably no point in putting the camera on, is there? I'll do. I'll save the battery for the way back when it will be prettier because we won't have to go on the motorway on the way back, unless I really need to pee, and that's a whole other problem. Mm.
hopefully you've seen some footage of our day out the meal was amazing there will be some pictures of my food um it's really lovely to see everyone as well because like all the staff are the same there um and our waitress who we um we had is the same waitress we had the first time we went there so you know it's a, such a lovely place all the staff are the same and really really enjoyed it really enjoyed it so it's nice to be out it wasn't half as scary as i thought it was going to be um yeah it was good so i'm back home now in the garden which is where i plan on staying for the foreseeable future it is very warm um but it's a nice breeze blowing and i am going to make ooh, a mess apparently I'm going to make some magnolia socks, which is from the Handmade Sock Society from years ago. My um, Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade. That's, that's them. There. And I'm going to make them scrappy out of my Nora George advent from a couple of years ago. That's the idea anyway. Um, and I'm only making them short. I'm making shorties. So basically, I'm just about changing everything in this pattern. <laughs> it's quite funny. Anyway, um, I'm going to cast on and um, stop yawning at you. Oh, that's not good. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast on once I've finished the toe on my current jelly rolls. Once I've done that, I'm going to cast these on. And I'm going to leave my EDT for today because I've nicked loads of it in the car. So yeah, that's my plans for the rest of the day. Someone's keeping cool.
part of Girl Guiding, we did a virtual district water fight and this is our contribution. There's four of us in guiding in this house and we all did it, but this was me getting very wet. So you don't want me to zoom in on this, no? No. I never. I always should have got this, like, get you to, like, run over so she just does it back to you. This is so, like, this is so sad. Yeah. So the idea is that when I've thrown the bucket, it looks like it's going over someone else um, when it's all the movie's all put together. But it, yeah, it was good fun and it was a hot day. So it was a very nice. It was nice to be cool.